Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss another important topic of the constitution of India. That is the relationship between fundamental rights and directive principles. The relationship between fundamental rights and directive principles has caused some amount of difficulty. The judicial attitude also has undergone transformation over the time on this particular issue. The judicial view over the time has veered round from irreconcilability to integration between fundamental rights and directive principles. While discussing the relationship between fundamental rights and directive principles, we will take into consideration many important case laws decided by the Honorable Supreme Court of India. In this discussion, we are going to elaborate as many as 10 to 12 decided case laws by the Honorable Supreme Court of India. And for that purpose, we are going to classify the role of Supreme Court into two parts. First is the initial approach of the Supreme Court, which was a bit restrictive or literal and the liberal approach of the Supreme Court. So to begin with the initial approach of the Supreme Court or the literal approach of the Supreme Court. The literal approach of the Supreme Court was basically due to Article 37. The Supreme Court of India gave a literal interpretation to Article 37 which uh, clearly provided that uh, DPSPs are non-justiciable rights or they are not enforceable. Whereas fundamental rights are enforceable by virtue of Article 32 and 226 by appropriate rates, orders or directions. In this initial approach category, we are going to refer a very important case law that is State of Madras versus Champakam Durai Rajan, AIR 1951 SC 226. This is the first case on the relationship between fundamental rights and directive principles. In this case, a government order was passed in pursuance of Article 46 and which was in conflict with uh, Article 29 Clause 2 being a fundamental right. And the government order passed under Article 46 was held to be invalid by the Supreme Court simply because it was in conflict with Article 29 Clause 2 being a fundamental right. Honorable Supreme Court observed that uh, the provisions of Part 4 cannot override the provisions of Part 3 of our Constitution because the provisions contained in part 4 are expressly made non-justiciable or unenforceable by virtue of article 37 whereas the provisions contained in article uh, provisions contained in part 3 are made expressly justiciable or enforceable by 32 so the observation of the supreme court was that provisions of part 4 cannot override provisions of part 3 simply because the provisions of part 4 are non-justiciable provisions. Now comes the liberal approach of the Supreme Court. Over the time, we have noticed a perceptible change in the attitude of the Supreme Court uh, in this respect. Here we are going to consider some case laws which will show the liberal approach of the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court started giving a good deal of value and importance to directive principles as well while determining the scope of fundamental rights. In this segment, there are many case laws to begin with. First case is State of Bihar versus Kameswar Singh, AIR 1952 Supreme Court 352. In this case, 
the Supreme Court of India relied more on Article 39 in deciding the validity of certain Jamindari Abolition Act which was enacted under Article 31 for public purpose. The next case is Re Kerala Education Bill, AIR 1958, Supreme Court 956. In this case, Honorable Chief Justice Das, as he was then, observed that nevertheless, in determining the scope and ambit of fundamental rights, the court may not entirely ignore the importance of directive principles. Rather, the court should try to give effect to both as much as possible. The third case is a very famous case, Muhammad Hanif Qureshi versus the state of Bihar, AIR 1958 SC 731. In this case, a state law prohibiting slaughter of cows and calves which was enacted to give effect to Article 48 was held to be valid. There was a conflict in this case between Article 48 and Article 19 Clause 1 Sub Clause G. But the law which was enacted to give effect to Article 48 was upheld. So you can understand that DPSP was given more importance in this particular case. Next comes another very important case that is Golaknath versus State of Punjab, AIR 1967 SC 1643. In this case, Honorable Supreme Court observed that fundamental rights and directive principles formed an integrated scheme which is elastic enough to respond to the changing needs of the society. Next, Chandra Bhavan Boarding and Lodging Bangalore versus State of Mysore. AIR 1970 SC 2042. In this case, Supreme Court observed that there is no conflict between fundamental rights and directive principles on the whole. Rather, fundamental rights and directive principles are complementary and supplementary to each other. Next comes the very famous fundamental rights case that is Keshavanand Bharti versus State of Kerala, AIR 1973, SC 1461. In this case, Honorable Justice Hegre and Honorable Justice Mukherjee, they observed that fundamental rights and directive principles constitute the conscience of the constitution. There is no antithesis between fundamental rights and directive principles. Honorable Justice Shalat and Honorable Justice Grover in this very case, they also observed that part 3 and part 4, both these parts have to be balanced and harmonized. Next comes another very famous case that is Pathumma versus a state of Kerala, AIR 1978 SC 771. In this case, Honorable Supreme Court held that the constitution of India aims at bringing about a synthesis between fundamental rights and directive principles. Next comes the famous case of Minerva Mills versus Union of India, that is Minerva Mills Limited versus Union of India, AIR 1980, SC 1789. Honorable Supreme Court held 
that the constitution is based on the bedrock of the balance between the two that is fundamental rights and directive principles and the court also observed that to give absolute primacy to one over the other is to disturb the harmony of the constitution in another case of uh, unni krishnan versus state of andhra pradesh ain 1993 sc 2178 mr justice jivan reddy held that uh, direct principles and fundamental rights are supplementary and complementary to each other and they are not exclusionary of each other now we can understand from the series of case laws decided by the supreme court that now there is no antithesis between the fundamental rights and direct principles in determining the scope or ambit of fundamental rights direct principles do play a crucial work now a new dimension we have seen that uh, certain direct principles they have been transformed into fundamental rights for example in randhir singh versus union of india air 1982 sc 879 honorable supreme court held that right to equal pay for equal work under article 39 clause d is capable of being enforced under article 32 though it is not a fundamental right but it being a constitutional goal it deserves to be enforced under article 32 of the constitution so we can say that the dpsp of equal pay for equal work uh, under article 39 d uh, now by virtue of this decision it is enforceable under article 32 and under the same article fundamental rights are also enforceable in unni krishnan versus state of andhra pradesh in 1993 supreme court 2178 supreme court said that right to education is a part of article 21 it is implicit in article 21 and while determining the scope of right to education article 21 has to be read along with article 41 and article 45 these are dpsps so we have seen that uh, the relationship between fundamental rights and direct principles considering the relevant case laws we have also seen that certain dpsps Uh, have been transformed into fundamental rights by judicial interpretation so up to this for now thank you for watching